What's going on guys, it's King Touch Pro. welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create a 2.5D parallax effect in Photoshop. It's very easy, all you have to do is to make sure you have Photoshop CC or Photoshop CS6 extended uh, to have the video animation available and the 3D mode also available. Other versions will not work, but this is what we're going to be creating in Photoshop. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and push play. It looks really cool. It's a very cool parallax effect. It makes an image, a still image, make it appear moving. And it's really cool and easy and simple to do. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. Alright guys, so the first thing you want to go ahead and do is import your picture into Photoshop, of course. I use this picture from Unsplash.com. I'm not sponsored by them in any way, but you guys can check them out. I got this image because they post royalty free images, so why not use this one? The first thing you want to go ahead and do is press Command J or Control J to make a copy of our picture here. And then we're going to go ahead and select the person or the object, in this case the girl. Now you could of course select the quick selection tool to select her much quicker if you would like. Uh, I will also post this picture down in the description so you guys can check this picture out and uh, you guys can use it as an example to follow along if you guys want to do that feel free. I use the pen tool because you have more control of what you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and start selecting this. Keep in mind though when you're selecting the object or your person or whatever, you want to go ahead and make sure to kind of stay within the picture here. So just kind of go around just like that. If you want to zoom in, please zoom in so you know what you're doing. The longer you take with this, the better the picture will come out. I'm going to go ahead and just finish this here and then once I am done, I will come back to you guys on what to do next. Guys, so once you have finished selecting your person or your object, you're going to go ahead and right click and click on make selection to make a selection. And then where it says feather radius, you want to put 0.5 pixels for the rendering and the operation new selection and you want to make sure that this is checked and then click OK. But you may notice that some of the hair was not selected. So, if you want to select that hair and like these tiny little hairs, you can do so with the Refine Edge tool in the Quick Selection tool here. So click this little icon here, it looks like a little brush with little dots around it. You want to click on that and click on Refine Edge. Now this works best if your background is more simple and plain, um, of course this is. But if you have pictures where the background is very complex and there's a lot of stuff happening in the background, it's going to be really hard to select the hairs here. So we're going to go ahead and just click Refine Edge and then we want to make sure we click on Smart Radius before we do anything. Go over around the head, like around the hair or those little pieces of hair and then just start selecting it just like that. And then Photoshop will do its best to select those pixels just like that so we have some hair there. Just so it doesn't look so weird and sharp. So we're going to do that just like that and then we're going to go just around here. Don't go like anywhere near the face because it's going to get rid of her face or her forehead or whatever is on her face. But if there's hair around her face, be very careful. Make sure to zoom in and that you don't select a lot of her hair. But um, right here, we're going to go and just select a little bit from there. And right here, of course, some of this, like her scarf is cut off. So we're just going to go back and get some of that detail back. So once you're done with everything here, I feel like everything's pretty good. Down here is some of this is gone, so just kind of select that, just like that. And then once you're done with that, click on the output to make sure it's not on selection, but on new layer. Um, and then that will create a new layer with the selection that we just made. And then click OK. And then from here, we'll create a new layer with our selection, which is this right here, along with the hair, which is really cool. So now we don't need the layer one, the middle layer there anymore. So just press delete and now we'll get rid of it. So let me go ahead and zoom out. Sorry if I'm like getting you dizzy, but just press command minus or command plus to zoom in and out. Uh, and then the background, we want to make sure that we have this uh, so, so we have it available to edit. So right now it's locked. So we want to go ahead and uh, unlock it. So double click on the background on an empty area here and then click OK. I'm going to go ahead and rename this so we stay organized. So I'm going to just name this uh, background and then I'm going to name this um, girl. Or actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna name this beach for the time being, right? And then from here, we have to remove her from the actual background, and then fill in the background with whatever is in the back. So to do that, it's very simple. All you gotta do is press Command. Make sure you have the background selection, of course, the background layer selected, and then press Command or Control if you're on a PC, and then click this little icon here or the thumbnail 
where your object is and it's going to select the pixels that we have selected right and then we're going to go ahead and go to the select go to modify and then click on the expand option there it's going to bring the expand selection window and then it, we want to expand this by 10 pixels so yeah click ok and then that will just expand it a little bit the reason we do this is so we can erase most of what we have selected so now if we go to edit and then we go down to fill or shift f5 for the shortcut we're going to go ahead and select contents we want content aware and this will remove her from the background and fill it with whatever's in the background make sure everything is just like this click ok and then now photoshop will do its best to get rid of her <laughs> and uh you know fill it with the background like if nothing was there you're gonna have this right here and that's okay we're gonna fix it right now um, so don't you know freak out or anything it's easy to fix so all you got to do is select the lasso tool and it looks just like that the shortcut is L on your keyboard and just select the parts where Photoshop did not delete or remove you press shift delete and press enter or shift uh, backspace and then press command D or control D and then look at that Photoshop did its best to remove it so we're gonna go ahead and select this long piece here just like that and then we're gonna press shift delete backspace and then enter and then Photoshop will fill it with whatever's around it with that so like around here need some work just like that and then press shift delete one more time and then delete it so now you're gonna have this little piece here that's okay it's gonna be covered with this anyway so you won't really see it unless you scale it like all the way up then yeah of course you're gonna see it this is a really good you know example of what Photoshop can do so once we're done with that we're gonna go ahead and create a new document so go to file go to new or command N or control N if you're on a PC for the shortcut we're gonna go ahead and just type in girl for the document we want the width to be 1920 and the height to be 1080 so 1920 by 1080 the resolution 72 or 300 if you want and then just click OK and now we'll fill it with white once you're done with that press command and then select the other layer to select all the layers and then press alter option on a Mac and drag that onto here of course this is gonna be really big so zoom out by pressing command minus or control minus and then press command T or control T to uh, go to the transform tool hold down alter option and shift and click and drag that down just like so so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just like that and then I feel like I need to make this a little bit smaller not too small but just kind of so it fills the document press command enter cool so once you're done with that we're gonna have background layer we don't need that so just press delete so now we just have girl copy and beach copy um, of course it renamed it because we made a copy of it and then from here you want to go ahead and make sure that you convert each layer into a smart object the reason we do this is because we're going to be scaling it and we don't want to decrease the quality of our picture so right click on each of the layers and click convert to smart object and then you're gonna have this little like box here next to it so click convert to smart object and then now we can scale it without losing quality so now we're gonna go ahead and go to window and bring back the timeline or bring the timeline back this is the reason why you need Photoshop CC or Photoshop CS6 extended because we need to create a video timeline uh, other versions of Photoshop don't have this option the only option you have is a frame animation we don't want to do that we want to create a video timeline so we can use keyframes so click on create video timeline and then you're gonna have this here what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go to girl copy or whatever your document is named click this little arrow there and then click on the transform make sure you're in the very beginning of your document here click this little clock icon and that will create your first keyframe so from there we're gonna go ahead and press command T and then we're gonna kind of scale her up just a little bit not too much make sure you hold down alt or option and then shift and then make her kind of big just like that and this and then press command enter and then kind of go down towards the end here just like so and then create a, another keyframe so click this little diamond icon press command T and then we're gonna shrink her so we're gonna make her smaller just like so now of course the smaller you make her the more dramatic the effect will be so you can see that right now her her body's gone but we'll just bring that down just like that so now she is going down just like that she's shrinking so we're gonna do the same thing for beach the background layer except we're gonna do the opposite so instead of making the beach smaller right we're gonna make it bigger so we're gonna scale it up so we're gonna go ahead and click on this little clock icon we're gonna create it creates a new keyframe and then right now it's set like this that's what that's how we want it now we go towards the end 
here make sure it's aligned with our other keyframe we're going to click on the diamond icon to create another keyframe and then press command t and then press command minus to zoom out or control and then hold down alter option and then shift and then scale this up don't scale it too big if you you know if you don't want the effect to be too dramatic if you go back and push space you're going to see that photoshop is going to render out everything here so it's going to look a little wonky right now a little weird um, but once Photoshop renders everything and we play it back, we just move, we just create a still image and make it appear like it's moving. So now if we push space, you're going to have this right here. And you could, of course, go more in depth with this. There are other tutorials that go really advanced. They actually use Photoshop in the beginning part, but then they transfer it into After Effects and have the actual image move. So if you guys want more videos just like this, please leave a rating below in the rating section. That will be awesome. Comment down what video you guys want to see next, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, take care, and enjoy your day.